Hello and welcome to another edition of Footy Flashbacks. Today we travel back to 1998 for the round 18 cliffhanger between two old rivals, Essendon and Carlton. Kevin Sheedy's Bombers and David Parkin's Blues had met in round three earlier in the year, where the Dons snuck home by just one solitary point. Fifteen weeks later, 71,000 fans turned up at the MCG for the rematch of these two star-studded sides. And they wouldn't be disappointed. Neil Kearney is with two men who played a big part in the dramatic final moments of Round 18, 1998. Well, we're at Windy Hill with two former Essendon greats, Scott Lucas and Scott Camparelli, although, Scott, you're in the wrong colours for this game. Yeah, no, it's a long time ago now, but, um, yeah, no, I've played most of my career at Carlton, that's for sure. Carlton and Essendon always a great rivalry, more than most other clubs? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, there's Collingwood and Richmond that always, when Essendon play, draw the big crowds and get the supporters that little bit extra involved in the game and uh, no Sheedy. different. Sheedy? Sheedy a bit more needle there because yeah. he's, of his long-time resentment of Carlton? I think so. I think Sheed just likes to needle uh, all his oppositions and uh, due to the volume of supporters that they have, there's more of them that get upset by it. And David Parkin in those days? A bit of animosity there with Sheedy? Yeah, look, I think... You know, during that era, both teams were really successful, so, you know, the games were always had a fair bit hanging on them, but, uh, you know, they are always close and, and they are always, you know, pretty high-scoring games. Well, talking about close, your two teams had met earlier in the season. Essendon by a point. An absolute thriller, a classic in the end, and the Bombers have won it! Yeah, it doesn't get much closer than that, and uh, both teams were around the mark, so uh, it was a big game. Well, from the get-go, it was a cracker, and I guess the big clash was Lloyd versus Sylvania. Up to Hardwick, inside the 50, Lloyd, beautiful! Um, Lloyd was brilliant that day, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Look, uh, he stood up for us in the low-scoring game. To uh, kick the goals he did for us was uh, very important. Seems every time we talk about old football games, Sylvani's in there somewhere. He was one of those blokes who every game he played in was some sort of great contest, wasn't it? Yeah, I oh, look, you know, playing with Soss and... And I admire him. Admire him uh, during his playing days. He was, you know, probably the, you know, the best, you know, body-on-body -body player, and uh, particularly in in his era. But uh, not sure how well he'd go now, Sauce, with the way the umpires uh, adjudicate things. But he was always, you know, even when he Every thought he was out of position, you know, he'd always find a way. It was always a contest. It was always plant your feet on the ground and try and knock the other bloke over, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it he'd was. He'd wear you out. Yeah, he, he did. He just had that frame and. Uh, he got plenty of experience playing on some of the guns of all time. Uh, it was a challenging uh, career for him, but he was such a good player. And uh, I know Lloyd, he always found him one of his toughest opponents. Here's a chance. Carlton answer with one. Lance Whitnell gets it. Well, talking about bodies, Lance Whitnell was at the height of his game at that point. I think he'd had a big game the week before. He was 19 years of age. Stephen Kernahan described him as a 19-year-old player with a brain of a 29-year-old. Career didn't pan out as we would have all hoped. Yeah, look, Lance is one of the one of the guys that you know we really had big expectations. And look, he th I think he still had a wonderful career at Carlton. You know, his body probably didn't stand up to the rigours um, of what we needed him to do at that stage. And look, he went on to play you know the 200 games, and he's all Australian and and won a best and fairer. So uh, I think he had a pretty good career. But certainly in his younger days, he was fantastic. What went against Lance is the game changed so quickly. It became. Uh, a real contest from end to end, and uh, unless you're a, a big aerobic capacity and a, a big engine and a quick player, it's uh, pretty difficult these days. Hume, well done. Bradley's had a purple patch over the last few minutes. Long kick on the run by Bradles. When you were training in the off season, you do the 15 minute run or that sort of stuff. Who was the better runner? I know Bradles was always the better runner. There's was no it? doubt about that. Yeah, no, we're always chasing his tail pre-season, but yeah, look, he's one of those you know phenomenal athletes that you know, could run really well and, and do great times pre-season, but also back it up on a football field. And you know, we probably played with guys, Scotty, that have had really good athleticism in terms of training, but don't back it up on a football field. But, you know, Brattles was obviously one of the guys that could do both. There were 70,969 people there at the MCG, Essendon versus Carlton. And you wouldn't get any more pressure or better atmosphere than that, would you? No, look, uh, it was one of the great things about playing for a team such as Essendon. As uh, soon as the rivalry was there, a big crowd came along and uh, it was a great privilege to play in front of so many big crowds. And you've got guys with the big occasion players like Kuda Fides. Oh, oh, big mark from Kuda! It was a yeah. hell of a grab he took in the third quarter, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, look, you know, we 
probably got a bit spoilt playing with Cooter over the years. He, you know, we come to expect that of him, and you know, he was a fantastic player for the club, and you know, really turned games on his, on its head at times. Yeah. Well, at three quarter time, Carlton is two goals up. Thank you, Scott. And Scott, we'll talk about the game afterwards. Uh, let's go to the last quarter. It's Carlton versus es versus Essendon in a typical thriller. The lights are on. But there's a crowd of more than 50,000 here and they're watching a great struggle. Two goals the difference going into the final quarter. The Rhino wins it. But it's going to be the Bombers who want the first score. Johnson kicks down towards Cockatoo Collins. He gets it away towards McCurry. McCurry puts it inside. 50! And Hogg takes a juggling mark. So Johnson on for the Bombers. And Hogg's away for Carlton. Back towards the centre. Strong mark taken by Allen. Came from behind, snatched front spot from O'Connor. And will now kick Carlton into attack. A floating punt kick towards Whitnell. He's going to be the first to recover. He goes in hard. With him is uh, Carousella in over the top. Chris Massey comes in to assist Whitnell. There'll be a bounce. At three-quarter time, acting uh, skipper for the Bombers. Sean Denham was sent over by Sheedy to the umpire and he had a long chat with Darren Goldspink. Last a good minute or two. Camparelli tries to go off the ground, nearly kicks Carousella through for a goal. Fletcher. McKay hit the ball hard and won possession as a result. In he goes to Allen. Not a great hand pass by him. Brown. White. Massey at full stretch. Good spoil by Blumfield. And it comes back to him. Oh, then he gives up a poor hand pass. Berbikoff. O'Donnell. Up towards centre wing. Lloyd. He's been fantastic. He's on a great player. And Matthew Lloyd has just been brilliant with his leading, marking and four goals. But on that occasion, he's kicked it straight up to the opposition. Murphy gives it to Bradley. Craig Bradley had ten possessions in the third term. Long to full forward. Blumfield, not great distance, but Carousella takes the mark. Hasn't got much of a build, but he's certainly got courage, that boy. Into Calthorpe. He has got a build. To half forward, Manton! We hit the ground very hard. It comes Cockatoo Collins' way. Out to Barnard. Back into the cocky. Off the ground, goal! Craig Cockatoo Collins had the awareness then not to take possession of the footy because he knew he was really hot and uh, had he taken it, no doubt the tackle would have been laid. But Jeez, he was put under the pump though, wasn't he, yeah. by the hand? But what about this mark? Oh, look. 50-50? Yeah, I'm happy with that being called as play on. He didn't really hold it for very long at all. But Shay Cockatoo Collins just aware enough not to take the footy, knowing that there was a tackle pretty imminent. One straight kick in it. So he missed a sitter early in the day, but he's made amends there. Johnson, out of the centre to Hardwick. Only as far as Dean Rice. Now Carlton have had the ability to be able to answer any challenge so far today. What can they do now? Allen floats over the top, takes a fine grab. He'll head down towards Whitnell territory, comes wider. He's coming via Camparelli. He's got McKay on. Whitnell's in the square saying, here they are, pointing to the big sticks. Right there. Hasn't missed a game this season. Premiership player back in 1995. He's kicking from 48 metres. Coming back beautifully. Lovely kick for goal. What an answer. Well, that one really did sting the Bombers after uh, getting off to a good start in this, in this mm -hmm. final term. A quick rebounding goal to the Blues uh, has robbed them of momentum, and now they really have to just start it all over again. But after ignoring the McKay lead, Scott Camparelli took it upon himself to go back and kick the goal and he did it pretty well. Back in the middle with the Blues back out to a two goal lead. 
Allen palms to Brown, runs into a brick wall. Camparelli, the goal scorer, a very high ball. Massey made a good contest. O'Connor to Hardwick. Wide to centre wing. That won't go out. Calthorpe. And support from McCurry. This looks good now for the Bombers. Johnson, long kick, contested up there. Punched by Manton. All Carlton at ground level. Oh. Murphy took his eyes off it. Lucas has it. Spinning out of trouble. Hand pass knocked down by Allen. Comes to Hume. Pushing the back. Advantage. So Brown goes wide. Kuda feed his half back flank. In short to Silvani. No mark. He laid it like an egg. And the umpire will ball it up. Well, it does sneak through to the keeper, this one. As we see the sauce rolling over the ball. Or as Drew would say, hatched. Yes. <laughs> On centre wing, Somerville. An underground little pump. Taken away by Kutafides. Good kick. Good kick. And Beaumont is 50 out. That is game-busting footy by Kuta. No one at home, so he says, I'll head there. And he'll bounce it through. The Blues have the answers. Well, well done to uh, Ange Kutafidi. I'll rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's his twin get -up. That's a combination of two great players. <laughs> and Diesel Kernahan and anybody else you like. <laughs> well done to Six Anthony Kutafidi, who got the ball down there to uh, Darren Beaumont, who kicked a goal. Just brilliant football by Kutafidis to burst through the pack. And this is a three goal lead now, the biggest margin in the game. The Blues have it out of the middle again. Brown applies the tackle, the ball comes free to Camparelli. Long, Whitnell in the goal square. He mightn't be needed. It is offline and through for a minor score. That could be a handy point. Jared, Carlton seemed to be winning the ball out of the centre with so decisively. Mm. What, what would you do if you were Kevin Sheedy? Well, I guess uh, Kevin can only really just uh, orchestrate changes in the middle of the ground there. It's up to their ruckman. Maybe he could uh, try a different person in the in the ruck division. But he's got to get some players in the middle of the ground. Uh, They're going to take the ball away. McCurry's an obvious uh, target who hasn't been in at the bounces. It's Johnson sending Essendon forward down towards the 50. Carlton defence has been standing pretty strong. Silvani threw it out in front and went to ground. I mean, it's getting to that stage now, John, where it's uh, it's really critical for the Bombers. So you could even put a Matthew Lloyd into the centre bounces or a Scott Lucas just to have a little bit more strength there. Kudafidis goes in for Carlton and uh, you could have a similar scenario. Well, they've got to try and score while they've got it in that attacking zone, but it's Hogg who defends. Hardwick. Belts it out of the centre. No one waiting down though. Only Camper Rally as he chips it into the forward line again. Beaumont once more. He's taken nine marks. More than anybody else on the ground. Yeah, it's good work, isn't it? They've left the whole forward line open for a player that really does know how to lead. He's just got to kick more goals. 46 metres. And is away to the left. Waiting down in front is Hardwick. Dulio claims it. Here's an opportunity. A step. Well at home. White has kicked it. White gets his first. Carlton now say you can catch us if you're good enough. And it was a defensive punch from uh, the Bombers that left a bit to be desired. The ball needed to go over the boundary line. There you see the big punch coming from behind. A little bit of a fumble there and a good tackle. And it results in a Blues goal. Welcome back to Footy Flashbacks as we now take a look at Scott Campriali in the Just For Men Then and Now profile. And hasn't Camper aged beautifully?
It's hard to tell which one is 34 and which one was just 22. Well, time now to get serious though and head back to the footy because we've got a big finish coming up. It's round 18, 1998. Carlton has a 25 point lead over Essendon with 13 minutes to go. It looks like a match winning lead in a very low scoring tight game. But there might be some twists and turns yet. Camparelli bursts out of the middle again. Beaumont. He's played a game. Bad luck about his kicking for goal. Back he goes to oh. Camparelli, but too high. Cockatoo Collins is there for the Bombers. Good hands, McCurry. Wide he goes to Berbikoff, but too far. Well, he kept the ball in. Back to Mark McCurry. Calthorpe from behind. Punches down. Somerville playing the role of Rover. Well done, Calthorpe. Carousella. Inside the 50. Allen is there for the Blues. Silvani to save. Wide to White. White to Brown. They've done it a few times today. Mix it up and what do you got? Milk chocolate. Brown, a good kick. Sexton. Offline with his kick. Well, the Bombers keen to save every point. Hardwick kicks out and in the back pocket, Berbikov. Barnard takes the mark. He's almost down to half back. They've got just under 12 minutes Essendon if they're good enough. 52 plays 77. Big, big margin in the context of this game. Murphy. On the outer wing. Kicks into half forward. Whitnell couldn't take it. Manton is there for the Navy Blues. Away he goes to Sexton. A floating punt into no man's land. Which way will it bounce? The Bombers now defending grimly. Blumfield gets the hand pass away to O'Donnell. Is forced to accelerate. Then finds something at the back. Wellman has got him at halfback. Sean Wellman gives it away to Barnard again. Gets underneath it. It's not a pretty kick. It's high. They'll all clamour for it. McKay waits down. Can't take it cleanly. Silvani comes away with it. Tumbles it back towards the centre. Only as far as Fraser. Now they need a goal out of this. Fraser to full forward. And they might just get it with Mr Lloyd kicking for number five. Oh, Sosh, you were caught then. Well, he was caught out because of an unlikely turnover. It was just a poor kick. And we'll see it coming up here. It was from Soss himself. He had the footy. And uh, at the moment that Soss was kicking the ball, his man was running towards the goal mouth. He said, oh, heck, I better get on my bike and get back to him. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Nine kicks and four goals so far for Matty Lloyd. This one to keep them in touch. Locks just come on for Carlton. But we're going to watch this boy. We might have just snuck it home. Just. But it's there. Five goals to Matthew Lloyd. And they hang on. 8 10 plays 11 11. Yeah, they keep the game alive here. Essendon are capable of kicking two or three goals in quick succession. But, John, you've highlighted uh, an area of the game that the uh, Bombers have struggled in, and that's just taking the ball away in this uh, last couple of passages of play. But you notice that they are all prepared to take the defensive set up and Carlton the same and it's been Carlton winning Matthew Lloyd has five goals not too many can boast that sort of a return on Stephen Silvani ball back in the middle Allen gets it going the Blues way Brown but he can't clear the centre square and the umpire will ball it up 70,969 sure it built up after the start of the game because I think it was struggling to be that at the start and I think a lot of them maybe huddle up out of sight up the back of the stands has been a bit of a threat of rain but it hasn't rained all day it's a great attendance isn't it Whitnell good hand pass to Camparelli he comes up short Kudafides at the back Carousella not much distance O'Donnell has to wait McKay gets it away from him He's had a great final term, Scott Camparelli for the Blues. Lucas off for Essendon. Rhino back on. 
Camparelli six kicks in this term and we've been playing 14 minutes. Fletcher out the back. The Bombers need the next one smartly. Calthorpe high towards centre wing. Cockatoo Collins is there, so too is Buick. But they're under plenty of attention. Hogg almost could have received a free kick. And Matthew Hogg's been one of the Blues' best. He's had 17 possessions and at the same time he's kept Darren Buick. One of the match winners for the Bombers uh, to just 10 possessions, six of those kicks and four handballs. But uh, importantly, no goals for Darren Buick. The lights on here at the MCG. Just a slight spitting of rain. Nothing serious at the moment. It was forecast for late in the day. I've just said the rain's held off all day, and what happens? 30 seconds later, <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> and there it is. 8-10 plays, 11-11. Serious ramification for Essendon, but they haven't lost it yet. Johnson. Johnson! 47 metres from home. They need it. They need it, and they've got it. Sandy, that's one of the goals of the year that I've seen. It was just an individual performance by uh, young Jason Johnson. He was involved in an extremely quick handball. Just have a look at this passage of play. There it is there. Quick hands over to Buick. Buick's hand was handball was intercepted, but going through at a rapid rate of knots was Jason Johnson once again, following up his good work. Jason Johnson has just produced a bit of football magic to kick a goal there to give the Bombers still a hope. Johnson, 20 years old from the Calder Cannons, taken number 28 in the 96 draft. What a piece of play. Gave the hand pass, got it back, kicked a great long goal on the run. But here come the Blues again oh. through Hume, and he hangs his head after giving that one up to Fletcher. Fletcher across the ground to the Southern Stand side. Just to 13 points the margin, and with still eight minutes to go, a game which had looked Carlton's is alive still. Cockatoo Collins just inside the boundary line, centre wing. He's kicked short of the 50, Bradley works to the rock. Oh, Calthorpe, well done. Play on, he centres the ball. Hitting it very hard, Moorcroft gets it across to Somerville. He hoists it high. <laughs> Yours? <laughs> the foot of the pack Hume to make amends but he hasn't found the boundary line this is on 50 and a bit of space here for Carousella into Buick the Bombers lifting a centering kick oh, oh. good Mark Murphy it was strong wasn't it it's the second uh, telling Mark he's taken in five minutes Justin Murphy another good game for him, from him short to Sexer but he takes it on the half volley oh caught one high no free kick play on is the call the pressure building now, Blumfield gets rid of it quickly to O'Donnell, hurriedly onto the left foot, he pokes it into the hole, and there once again is Murphy. Steady as a rock, wider to Allen. And uh, Gary O'Donnell just exposed there with no right foot. McKay, costly under that sort of pressure. On the outer side of the MCG, swings it in towards Whitnall territory, Fletcher goes to ground. Bradley, a little chip to go in 20 or so metres. O'Donnell may get there and keep it in play. He does. But that's very wide and it's out of bounds on the full. A let off for Carlton. McKay to bring it in. So all the momentum in the Bombers, it uh, should well have resulted in a goal. Six and a half minutes left, 64 plays, 77. Carlton leads, and that too has gone out on the full. What was that? Well, it was anything but pretty. Wellman. Popped a heavy one earlier in the match, but is OK. Goes short to O'Donnell. Swings it in towards the middle. Kept out was a camper rally. They look dangerous again, Essendon. Over. Moorcroft goes over the top to the Rhino, who can steady, shoot, and go! Still here. Well, that was a Johnson better. in the middle was there again. Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? We've seen him play a couple of absolutely outstanding uh, quarters for the Bombers over the last two years, but he hasn't been able to force his way in as a regular in this Bomber lineup. But uh, he's got a big future in footy. But a much better uh, passage of play there by Gary O'Donnell. He did pinpoint the pass. It was a bit of a gamble, but it came off. 
And this was a good kick under pressure from the Rhino. Now this is a big takeaway from the centre bounce. The Blues have absolutely blitzed in that area. But this one has got uh, plenty of pressure written all over it. And Allen wins it down to Brown. Fraser Brown bursts. Up to full forward. Kicked out of there by Wellman. Knocked forward by White. Carousella, one touch footy. That was great. Ball bounces end on end. Cockatoo Collins. Moorcroft fighting hard for the ball. Season on the line. Calthorpe. O'Connor, he's still a chance in the pocket. The Rhino. His strength kept him in play. Oh, good play Lloyd. Here's Matty Lloyd. Use of the hips was great. Buick goes back with a hand pass. Calthorpe smothered. O'Connor again. Buick, it won't make it. Cockatoo Collins is there. And through for a point it goes to make it. One straight kick the difference. And time, not a factor. Over five minutes remaining. Not a bad game of footy, is it? What a thriller. <laughs> Started at one mile an hour and finishing at 100. But the Blues have got an absolute uh, advantage in centre bounce takeaways. It's not going to help them at the moment, but if it goes back in there, the Bombers have got to do something about Fraser Brown, who's slaughtered him in that area all day. Carlton led by 25 points at the 12 minute mark of this final term. And now, it is a very different story. McKay and Brown head towards Whitnall. Couldn't quite trap it cleanly enough to keep it in play. They didn't give him a lot of room in which to move. One straight kick in it. Well, in their earlier meeting, there was a point, the difference at the end of the day. There's Whitnell, Summerville. O'Donnell's now gone on to Brown, and Kelthorpe's gone back to pick up Craig Bradley. And here is the man you're talking about. Ripped away from the ball. Almost taken over the line. This time, Kudafides keeps it in. Brown was slung. Gee, it is tight in there. Berbikoff, interesting the way he got beat the ball on that occasion. Slap back once again. Wellman, twisting and turning. Who loses the footy. Carousello's on the end of it. Blake Carousello into Johnson. What a spark this boy's provided. Johnson from the centre. Kicks up towards Lloyd at half forward. One grab. Couldn't take it. Buick. Buick pass clear. Left foot snap in towards goal. He pulls it away to the right. It's out of bounds in the right forward pocket. And there'll be a throw in. Over 70,000 at the MCG, and they're finding some voice now. Bombers trail by six points. It's flipped towards the goal square. Manton cool slung tackle. to the ground by Barnard. Great tackle. Caparelli gets it to Sexton. Oh, Diulio couldn't take it. Masiti short. Oh, Cockatoo Collins almost. Hurt himself. Still down the cocky. White goes short to centre wing. Beaver pitched the crowd. White's hand pass. Hume to Brown. Brown to Bradley. Calthorpe too late with the spoilers at 50. Carlton fans say yes. Umpire says no. Cockatoo Collins come down on his jaw by the looks of him. He was at such full stretch. Camparelli had a brilliant finish to the game. Whitnell. White offline, but it's a seven point lead to the Blues. It's a big behind, isn't it? Oh, what a finish. And uh, this Cockatoo Collins. We'll have a look and see what happened to him, Jared. Well, he does do a uh, flat out dive. It was a great effort. He just doesn't quite get there, but he seems see him smashing his head into the MCG turf. And he would have been dazed after that one. Prodigious kick back into play. Wellman was one of the flyers. Uh, Johnson comes away over the centre towards Buick. He's got it in front of Hogg. With two and three quarter minutes remaining. They're down by seven points. Buick will blast from the middle. It's a big punt kick. They need a big mark. Lloyd! Lloyd! He's got it, I think. The Stellan. One point again. It's the margin. Can you believe it? 
No. <laughs> In a word. What a comeback from the Bombers after seemingly being out of it. I think mean, it got out to about 17 points, the deficit. 25. 25, in fact. Well, you would have said then that the game was almost gone, but this is a fantastic comeback and a fitting result to a good match. Two and a half minutes remaining, a point the margin. And when they last played in round three, it was a point the margin. That time it was Essendon in front. Carlton lead by a point now. Calthorpe out of the middle, inside 50. Big early leap by Kudafidis, not near the ball. Buick! Loses control, Kuda followed up and got the ball to the line. And it's out of bounds, just inside the attacking 50 for the Bombers. We could get a repeat of a one-point margin. Cockatoo Collins has gone off after that full-length dive and he landed on his jaw. What a finish. After the Blues led by 25 points at the 12-minute mark in this term, Essendon back to within one. From the throw-in, Brown picks it up now, tries to get out of the tackle. Carlton need possession. They need to maintain it. Carousella needs to score. At least Essendon does. Carousel and a Calthorpe. Get those little pistons pumping. He gets underneath it. It's high. They're inside 50. They need a mark. Moorcroft gave away centimetres. And Darren Gold speaks tapping his bottom. What's that suggest? Well, he's paid the mark to Moorcroft and telling the other umpire to go down to the goal square. And uh, the, the mark definitely paid to Moorcroft. Uh, I don't think he controlled it. Here's the kick. As he goes on with the job and puts through one behind, scores are level with one and a quarter minutes remaining. 125, in fact. 11 12 apiece. They have come back from looking gone. 25 points down earlier on in this turn. Well, you'd call this a pressure kick. Well, he's pretty good, Bradley, normally. That was no exception. Brown has it at half back. Carlton have had problems scoring though in the last few minutes. It's all been down at one end of the ground. Sexton gives the hand pass away. They've only got just over a minute left now. They kick towards half forward. It was a bad one for Whitnell. The Bombers tidy up again, going to the outer side. Carlton have the numbers. And the mark is taken. Here's Rice. Look out because Moorcroft is there once again. He gives it away to McCurry. McCurry's running inside 50. 40 metres out. He shoots and he scores. Oh! Marked on the line. Marked on the line by Silvani. Kicks it back into Rice. He's clean mould. Lucas is back on. Lucas shoots. Eston hits the front. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh, Stephen Silvani. Jared, why would he choose to do that? <laughs> Listen to that crowd. Incredible. Well, let's just have a look. Steve Silvani takes one of the best marks of the afternoon to save what we thought was going to be uh, not only the match, but four points. And then in an effort to get the ball on quickly to Rice, he doesn't quite hit it. And the mistakes are costly. Let's just have a look. Steve Silvani takes one of the best marks of the afternoon to save what we thought was going to be uh, not only the match but four points. And then in an effort to get the ball on quickly to Rice, he doesn't quite hit it. And the mistakes are costly. Thirty-one seconds remaining. And the Bombers have stolen this, but there's time yet for the Blues to get a draw. <laughs> oh, Stephen Silvani's kick out of defence, straight up the ground with no distance. Bradley gets the hand pass to McKay. Beaumont has been a very good forward today. Marked everything on the forward line. In short, Camparelli swamped Freaky the kick, kick to him. And importantly, Camparelli, one of the few players on the it's ground that could convert from this distance. And he may know that the siren is imminent. Is imminent. He'll also probably find out uh, very shortly that the game's over. Probably go before he kicks it, or as he kicks it, and it comes up short. The Bombers win by six points. Incredible. After being 25 points down halfway through the final turn. Now look at them head towards Young Johnson. He was the spark that helped ignite them, while the Carlton story tells a very different picture. That's four wins in a row to the Bombers. Is this a charge?
that could result in something big for the Bombers this year. Six goal final term, incredible. 6-2 to 3-2. To Once again it was a torpedo punt. Uh, that was the final shot of goal. We saw Darren Jarman do one last week and it went off the side of the boot. Scott Camparelli, such a long kick with the drop punt. Surprises uh, that he did go with the torpedo, but he probably didn't know that the siren was about to sound. And in fact, he would have been better off had the siren gone just before he kicked. But what a fantastic comeback by the Bombers. There's Michael Long and James Hurd. Hurd a late withdrawal, but not surprising with the concussion last week. And <laughs> Sheeds, the old master. Well, Kevin Sheed is clapping, and Neil Danaher has got his uh, head in his hands because that has yes. robbed them of a spot in the final eight. And maybe at the end of the year, a spot in the finals. The Bombers by a goal. Scott Lucas, you would have enjoyed kicking that one. Very much so. Uh, great to get a win and uh, we were backs against our wall, but uh, a little bit of help from Sauce and uh, got the goal. And of course, Scott Camparelli. Take us through that last kick. Yeah, well, it wasn't probably one of the better ones by one of our champions of the footy club, that's for sure. But yeah, Mark, I the actually ball. meant your kick, not his. Oh, right? after the game. Oh, yeah, well, no, I was trying to forget that. Yeah, so that probably wasn't one of my good ones either. Well, let's go back to Sauce for a start. Um, for such a great player, a legendary player, it was, I guess it was just a moment of panic. Oh, I think it was probably just a rush of blood. You know, he probably saw the option there. Dean Rice was there and probably just didn't get hold of it properly. And a little bit of a Shane, Shane Warren uh, uh, leg break there and Scotty was there to mop up. So probably not an ideal man to be mopping up Scotty with his left foot. So. Now Sondra on the left and it was gone. And to take us back to the final kick of the match, yeah. uh, it was a moment of not being aware of what was going on? Yeah, well, we obviously knew there wasn't much time to go. Uh, obviously, after the goal was kicked, it was when Scotty kicked it, we sort of knew there wasn't much time to go. But when I you know, got the ball, um, I was obviously looking to pass off, but then some of the boys said to hurry up, so I went back and kicked a, uh, a mongrel pun off the shin, I think. Yeah, it wasn't a very good torpedo, so I put that back in there. How in the often would bag. you have tried a, a kick like that? Oh, plenty of training, but I'm not sure... 60 punt, metres. You, you kicked a drop punt that went further than that earlier in the game. Yeah, no, I guess it's the situation. Probably on the run, might have gone close, but you know when it's a, a set shot and probably trying to get a little bit more distance, but it's just certainly uh, hindsight's a wonderful thing in football, isn't it? Did you walk off glum or was it something that got forgotten pretty quickly? Oh, no, no. In fact, let's be honest, before we showed you this tape, you'd forgotten you actually kicked that one, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so... Um, Were you remembering, I did, remembering the other nine kicks you had in that last quarter? Maybe I did block it out of my mind. <laughs> so... Uh, Oh, yeah, look, that's one of those things that happen in footy and hopefully it didn't um, cause the team too much trouble for the rest of the year. Matthew Lloyd had a fantastic game, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was a great player and a champion. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, to play on uh, the full back of the century and uh, kick six in a low-scoring game is, uh, certainly highlights uh, what a great player Lloyd he was for us over many years. If I were to ask this question, who was probably the better player, do you think? Lloydy or Richo? Uh, I'll go Lloydy. And you go? Yeah, oh, look, I think... Having know. seen him play week in, week out for 15 years, yeah. And be a pillar up for Yeah, him. I think so, but, uh, gee, there's not much in it. No, I wouldn't have thought uh, there's much in it. Different different type of player as well. Uh, you know, I think Matty's mobility, uh, Matty Richardson's mobility is obviously, you know, probably a real key for him and gave yeah. a bit more flexibility in where he played and, you know, even late in his career. But, yeah, you know, you I want... think Lloydy... Geez, if you wanted someone with a ball in his hand to win your yeah. game, he'd give it to Lloyd, it every, to Lloyd time. every time. And in that game, he ran Silvani all over the field. They were on the wing at one point in time. He, he was more an athlete than perhaps in his later days. Yeah, I think uh, we all get a bit older and, and I think injuries. a bit heavier and uh, makes it a bit more awkward. But I think uh, Lloyd had a great ability to sum up what he needed to do to uh, get the better of an opponent. Sauce was just wonderful one-on-one -on -one in a body-on-body. -body, so uh, to counter that, and Lloyd had been only around 20 then, uh, run him around, blow him up is the idea, but, uh, and uh, he seemed to work pretty well for him in that game. The goal by Jason Johnson was inspiring, wasn't it? That was almost a match winning, I think, to 25 points down at one point in time, the Bombers. Johnson, Johnson, 47 metres from home. They need it, they need it, and they've got it. We kicked away and probably thought we had him on toast, and, you know, in true uh, Essendon, Carlton, you know, form one team managed to get themselves back into it, but uh, 
yeah, look, you know, Jason's goal was, you know, fantastic and, you know, he went on to do that for a long time in his career at the footy club as well. But, you know, he really got himself involved in the game, particularly as a young fella. So, it was, uh, yeah, you know, he's been a really good player. How do you think the game's changed in the 13 years since that game? Yeah, it was funny, as I said to Scotty before, after watching the game again, the, the skill level and, you know, the openness of the game and, you know, the defensive side of the game, which is really emphasised, you know, that, you know, these days. Tackling. Uh, yeah, yeah, the tackling, you know, I think uh, we looked up, there was only, you know, 50 tackles for the game, you know, now, you know, 50 tackles for a team in one game, still a poor performance in, in the modern day, so... Um, there's not too many bomb kicks like there were, you know, in the game and, you know, a lot more precise, you know, with the skills, of, you know, kicking and handballing. So, yeah, it's been a massive, massive change, certainly in 11 years, that's for sure. Marked on the line by Silvani. Kicks it back into Rice. He's clean mould. Lucas is back on. Lucas shoots. Essendon hits the front. Can you believe it? Looking back on that last kick, uh, 40 yards out, uh, turn on the left foot, uh, you wouldn't miss many of those. No, not a lot, but uh, a little bit of luck involved. I had a pretty average day, so to get one at the end was really pleasing. And, uh, and the yeah. bloke next to you, do you reckon, if he was 50 yards out now, do you reckon he could kick it? Oh, he wouldn't be far away. <laughs> Think you could kick, could kick it if we get a ball? Yeah, let's go. Probably go before he kicks it, or as he kicks it, and it comes up short. The Bombers win by six points. Come on, Cambo, try and get it right the second time. <laughs> you might kick it, you've got an Essendon top on. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Bad luck, mate. <laughs> change, change, change the uh, score sheet. Yeah, change we might it. miss the finals now with that kick. Well done, Campo. But sadly for the Blues, history still says they went down. The Bombers did in fact make the finals, but were eliminated by the Roos. Well, that's the show for this week, but we'll be back again soon to relive another classic from yesteryear next time on Footy Flashbacks. There's the kick. It's a goal. As soon as Brown's come on, he's remonstrating with Dennis. Dennis looks dangerous on the boundary line again. Coming out, it's a goal. Any score will do. He kicks. Oh, another goal. St Kilda, their first ever premiership.